Hey guys, so today's video is going to be on my Colourpop products that I regret buying. So when I first got into Colourpop, I really wanted to collect everything that Colourpop released and I kind of kept up with it for a while. So I do have quite a lot of things that I have purchased and then later on regretted buying because they didn't work out for me, they didn't look good on me or the formula is just not as good as the other things. So Colourpop did have quite some good stuff when they first started out, so those things are worth collecting. Like their Super Shock Shadows, all their Ultra Matte, Ultra Satin, Ultra Glossy Lips, as well as their Ultra Metallic Lips and their Lippy Sticks. And they also had like the gel and eyeliner pencils and brow pencils as well. So those are pretty good things that are worth collecting and I wish like Colourpop kept them as permanent items because they are actually much better than some of the things that they have newly released. So I think they started to come up with like new stuff towards the spring of 2017 and that is when we have like the pressed powder face duos with the pressed powder blushes and all. Um, it came out in the Alexis Ren collection as well. So the Topaz palette is actually one of the first um, pressed powder face duos that Colourpop came up with and I jumped on that train and I got the Topaz palette but upon receiving it and trying it out I realized that the bronzer is actually too warm for me it has got this orange undertone which I personally do not like on my skin tone because it is too muddy and too orange for my liking. So that is something I regret picking up because it's $16 and if like half of the product doesn't work out for me then that's like $8 to waste. The highlighter itself is really nice and glowy and it is a nice golden shade so I can still use that but you know it's still not worth it in my opinion. And then they came out with the blotted lips as well and I'm wearing one of them right now. This is Deja Vu from the Alexis Ren collection and I like that it is like a my lips but better kind of shade. So it's very neutral and you can wear this every day with all kinds of looks. And I think this is like the only shade that I quite enjoy um, among all of the blotted lips including the new ones. The formula of these aren't very good. They are pretty dry and hard to apply so they do target your lips. And because they are so dry, it kind of breaks off easily. So mine broke off at the base when I turned it all the way up, which is such a pity. And these retail for $5, so if you're considering like cost per gram, it's $5 per gram since it only contains one gram of product. Also, the darker shades kind of apply patchy because this is such a dry um, formula, so it hugs and it doesn't apply evenly, so I think like only the neutral my lips but better kind of colors would work best with this formula but honestly if you're looking for a blotted lip or lip tint you are better off getting a proper lipstick and blotting it down with tissue or getting one from a korean beauty brand and then during spring of 2017 colourpop came up with their nectarine collection and they were kind of hyping it up because of how these colours were supposed to be trendy. So it comprised of peachy and orange kind of shades. And deep inside of me, I kind of knew that I wouldn't really like these shades because oranges are not my thing and I don't think they look good on my skin tone. But I still went ahead and purchased some things and turns out I really didn't like much of them. I didn't get the entire collection, which is actually just the eyeshadows, but I did get like the face duo and the liquid lips and the super shock shadows. So I'm totally fine with collecting super shock shadows because those have really good formulas and I can always use them as like lip toppers or highlighters or whatnot. But the liquid lipsticks and face duos were just super unflattering on me. I mean, this is one of the shades that I still have lying around. This is like the and this is an ultra set and lip. But this is honestly too pale and too peachy for my liking and it's just super unflattering. I managed to get rid of the other liquid lipsticks that I got. So one of them was Jacquard and that was like a super bright neon orange and it looked horrible on me and I would never wear that shade. And also the face duo was like super orange, so that wasn't my kind of blush. The highlighter is actually pretty nice because it is like a peachy um, undertone with a golden flip. But because the blush didn't work out for me, I decided to pass it on. I also went back onto the website like a few weeks later to check up on reviews and a lot of these products actually had quite low ratings because of how unflattering these colours actually are. 
And then they came out with their pink collection, which is phase 2 of their spring 2017 stuff. And I love pinks, but these pinks were just too pink for my liking. I think they kind of were like Barbie doll pinks, so it kind of looks weird on me. And I end up looking like a little bit anime or kiddish with these kind of pinks. I think I lean more towards more of the kind of pinks um, to suit my skin tone and my style. So I regret getting most of the products in this collection like the Press Powder Face Duo because the blush itself is way too pigmented and too pink for my liking so I never reached for it. I mean the highlight itself is nice, it is a pretty pink highlight for when you need pink highlighters but again the formulas of the Press Powder Face Duos are very dry and they kick up a lot in the pan so for $16 I think it is really pricey for these Press powder face duos. The liquid lipsticks were also very unflattering and pale, so they just do not look good on me. I think there was only one shade that I liked out of everything. And then there was a creme lippy sticks inside this collection, and I will touch on the creme lippy sticks in a moment, but this shade was also really bad. It's super pale and pink. So I think they came up with the new formulas for their creme lippy sticks during Valentine's Day which was probably before the spring stuff and Colourpop was raving about how good these new creme lippy sticks were going to be because they were so soft, creamy and buttery and moisturising but in my opinion, the reformulation was a total disaster and they should have just stuck with the old formula. I mean, I can see how these work for dry chapped lips in a dry and cold climate but coming from a hot and humid climate this formula just isn't for me I found these lippy sticks to apply on really thick and so it feels really thick and heavy on the lips and also they are super oily and they never dry down so they just get all over the place your teeth, your cups, everywhere and so yeah I really do not like the new creme lippy sticks even though they do have like one nice shade from the Nectar collection which is called Faded and that is a really pretty colour. But for Valentine's Day, they released like three shades and two of them were very unflattering nudes. So my next regretful purchase I'm going to talk about is the Amanda Steele Weekend Warrior palette. And this was Colourpop's first like introduction of their pressed powder eyeshadows. And for the first formulation, it was very dry and it kicked up a lot in the pans and they also applied pretty chalky. And as a palette, these colours weren't very easy to work with because of the colour scheme. It's pretty difficult, especially if you are new to makeup. I mean, these colours can go wrong very easily and make your eye look look like a bruise. So yeah, as a palette, I didn't quite agree with the colour selection. I mean, as individual like shades, you can definitely work if you mix and match it with something else. But as a palette, it was just a bit hard. And coming back to the blotted lips, we also have the ultra blotted lips that Colourpop released subsequently. And while they produce a nice effect and they are great for um, those light makeup days, the formula just doesn't agree with me and I think a lot of people out there do like this formula but for me it just doesn't stay on. It is very drying and it flakes off on my lips. I mean even the ultra matte lips do not do this on me so I'm not sure why the ultra blotted lips kind of flakes off and just doesn't want to stay on my lips. Also, the darker colours can apply or look patchy because of how sheer the formula is. So it's kind of hard to work with it if you are using a bright or dark colour and you want it to look perfect or even. So again, I would say to stick to a Korean beauty brand if you are looking for a lip stain or lip tint kind of effect because they know how to do it better. Another collection of things I regret buying is the Crystal Collection. So Colourpop went on this like crystal phase where they had crystal liquid highlighters and sprays and lip balms. And I do think the sprays and lip balms are pretty nice to use, but the crystal liquid highlighters are just not my thing. I find them to be really oily and the pump dispenser itself isn't very good in dispensing product. It always like squirts out too much product. I mean the packaging and all is really nice, but I just never reach for this because it is super oily and it doesn't really set or stick in place so like throughout the day you can sort of feed it on your face and it transfers on your skin and all so yeah not a big fan of this maybe if you have dry skin you will enjoy this but for me I have oily skin and I don't really use these. I think these were like 
seven or eight dollars so I bought all three of them and if I'm not going to use them it's like a complete waste of money. Finally, I have some super shock products that are just not going to complement my skin tone especially for like bronzes, highlighters and blushes because they are just way too dark for me. I mean, I could go in with a light hand on them but since I have like so many of the lighter toned bronzes or blushes or highlighters, I mean, why did I even purchase the dark ones for? I'm not too sure why also. I think I was in a phase of collecting everything and I wanted to have them all but honestly I do not need to get them all because I'm not going to use them and it's going to take me forever to use a Super Shock product up anyway. So one Super Shock face product is $8 and I'm embarrassed to say that I have quite a few unusable products because they're just way too dark for me and I've sort of like gotten better in my purchases so I've stopped getting like makeup that I can't use because it's not suitable for my skin tone and also makeup that I know I will not be using or liking and that includes some of the new stuff that Colourpop has released such as their loose pigments and highlighters so I know I will never reach for a loose highlighter or eyeshadow because it's just way too messy in my opinion and I like to keep a neat um, vanity and keep my makeup clean and neat. So that is something I won't be getting. Also, I will not be hoarding all the new lipsticks and liquid lipsticks that Colourpop comes up with because they are mainly reds and pinks and I don't really wear a lot of reds, especially orange toned reds. So yeah, I do not need those lipsticks or liquid lipsticks. And if the pink doesn't look flattering, I won't get it. If it looks nice, maybe I will. But yeah, I've been like under total control right now in my purchases. I also don't think I'll be getting the new face duos because they are like those kind of orange coral kind of shades and I do not wear orange blushes. I'm thinking about the purple blush because it looks unique but at the same time the reviews say it's more pink than lilac so it's not truly a purple blush. So yeah, I'm not too sure yet but we'll see. And so yeah, let me know if you guys regret getting anything from Colourpop as well because I would love to hear your opinion on what you like or what you dislike. And yeah, thanks for tuning in with me today and I'll see you guys soon in my next video. Bye bye!